than Yogendra Yadav. I'll give you the first shot. Since you've said the most controversial statement on Twitter, you've claimed that the BJP will be less than 250 and the NDA less than 272. Is this wishful thinking by someone who's seen as a critic of the Modi government? What is the basis why you're saying that you believe that the BJP is falling behind? Razdeep, let me begin by stating very clearly up front that I am no longer a sephologist. I used to be one, pichle janam mein, purum janam mein. I am a political worker. Uh, political workers need not be liars. They can try and get, and I try, really try very hard to keep my hopes and my assessment separate. So what I am offering is the assessment which I have made after traveling. I don't have any exit poll with me. Uh, it's a ground assessment based on the uh, on, on the basis of travels, on the basis of listening, reading, speaking, finding out. That's all that it is. And what I have said is the following. When the elections began, I said, I wrote that it is possible to bring BJP below 272, but I wasn't sure if that was actually going to happen because I didn't think opposition was doing what was needed to bring BJP below 272. When elections came closer, round one and round two, and I started traveling, I saw something was changing on the ground. And then I started saying, maybe BJP is coming below 272. And after the third round and after my travel, and my travel specifically, let me again put everything on the table. I've gone to Rajasthan, Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Telangana, Karnataka, and Chhattisgarh other places based on what I've heard, what I've spoken to. Uh, on that basis, my assessment today is that BJP, it's not only possible, BJP indeed is below 272 as of now, things the way they are going. My assessment is that they are below 272. And for the first time, it has appeared to me that NDA could be below 272. Uh, in what you've seen, the Twitter, the video that I've posted, that puts it to 68. But Rajdeep, let me be quite straight about it. I don't have any such instrument with me on the basis of which I can say exactly 268 and not 278, not 288 or not 248. No, I don't have that. These are very broad estimate. And all what I'm saying means is that we can be more or less certain now that BJP is much below 272. And that it's an open question whether even NDA could form a majority. So broadly what I'm saying is the idea that BJP could up the seats from 2019, mm -hmm. that can be completely ruled out. That is simply not true. Okay. BJP, to my mind, is unable to retain what it had in 2019. It's coming down. How much is it coming down? That's something open to debate. We can discuss it. I have one assessment. Others can have different assessment. I'll come to your specifics uh, la uh, later in the show. But uh, Surjit Bhalla, you had uh, stuck your neck out soon after your book was released. You believed that the BJP would be more than 300 and the NDA more than 350. Are you still sticking to that after four rounds of uh, the battle for 2024, Surjit? Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Rajdeep, for having me. Actually, you said Citizen Raj. That's my old book. This is the new book. How we My apologies. Book. Yeah. Uh, and <clears throat> yes, I'm very much sticking to what the forecast is um, in How We Vote, which was done in somewhere around February. Quite honestly, I don't, you know, if anybody were to read the book, and I suggest all of you do it, that I base it on economic performance primarily and <clears throat> that's how people vote indeed the last line of my book is is the economy stupid um, which of as you know comes from none other than bill clinton in his 1992 campaign mm -hmm. so looking around at the first four phases obviously like you and like all election junkies i'm following it very closely i haven't seen any sign Mm -hmm. to the vines, the forecast. Now, you're going to have seen a lot of signs to bring it down. I haven't seen any signs to bring it down at all. And that's why you have horse races, mm -hmm. because people have different views mm -hmm. on events. 
on on forecasts. And we'll have, all have to wait and see until Jan June 4th as to which one of us is more accurate. And I'm waiting to hear what Pradeep has to say. Um, but basically, the economy, every sign of the economy, every data point that we received on the economy is reinforcing that it really is doing very well. So um, I'm afraid I don't see much uh, okay. reason to bring down or to change my forecast in any way. It remains 330 to 350 for the BJP on its own. Okay, I'm going to again come back to you also for specifics because when you say 330 to 350, that means the BJP is doing even better than last time and I'm going to ask you yes. to remember to pick up where you believe they'll grow. But Pradeep Gupta, you're the only one out of us who's doing a poll. And I know because of regulations, you uh, cannot reveal the numbers. And of course, you've got an exit poll or we have an exit poll coming up with you on the 1st of June. So we'll keep the suspense for that. But I want to answer, you went on Ajtak last after the third round and said, Koi zyada ulat fair nahi hone wala hai. And immediately that went viral to say Pradeep Gupta is saying 2024 is a repeat of 2019. Can you clarify, is Pradeep Gupta saying that 2024 could be, could be a repeat or is likely to be a repeat of 2019? I want clarity. So, uh, Rajdeep, let me tell you, at Access My India or Pradeep Gupta for that matter, what Surjit Ji said, is not supposed to reveal, release, say anything as far as the numbers goes because of ECI guidelines. So we'll have to wait till the last vote cast. Till that time, even, even I do not have any kind of numbers whatsoever. That's mm -hmm. me, let me clarify very candidly. Now, second thing you asked the Aztec channel and Sudhir Chaudhary, Ji asked me some questions and I replied. He simply asked, Pradeep, aap kya bhoat bada ulat fair dekh rahe hai kya? I hmm. said, bhoat bada ulat fair to mein nahi dekh raha hu. That's what I said and mm -hmm. that's it. No, so are you saying bhoat sara ulat fair means what? That there is no great change that you are seeing compared to 2019. That's why people are saying, Pradeep yeah. Gupta is saying, BJP still remains in pole position. Now, when I say ulat fair, sabke apne apne maine or definition hai ulat fair. Ki. Yes. Or usme bhi wo laga hua hai, bahut bada ulat fair to nahi dekh rahe. As far as 2019 numbers go, mm -hmm. if I say anything on these lines, in a way, in a way, I am saying some kind of a number, which I am not I am not asking to. you for a number. I no, am no. saying, you are saying so far, you forget the numbers. I am not asking you that. I am not asking you to go into that. I am saying, is Pradeep Gupta saying that he is seeing no signs of major change in this country at the moment? That's all I am asking. Yes, I am saying so. You are saying that Pradeep Gupta is not seeing any signs of major change in this country. I emphasize the word yes. major. Nothing to do with numbers. Nothing to do with numbers, uh -huh. but you are saying you are not seeing any major change between voting trends of 2019 and 24. Correct? Correct. Okay. That's the closest that Pradeep is going to come to tell us <laughs> that therefore it could well be advantage BJP. The only reason I'm saying this is my interpretation, because remember BJP got 303 seats last time, the NDA got 353. When Pradeep Gupta says that there could be no major changes, effectively at least party number one, there is no doubt in. Now again, people can interpret it even major changes with the visa vis the bahut bada ulat fair. Ulat right. fair matlab hota hai ki upside down. That's the meaning I know at least when somebody say ulat fair. Ulat fair ka matlab hai yahan ki chiz yahan ho jana aur wahan ki chiz yahan ho jana. That is something I I I don't see at all on the ground. Okay, Yogendra Yadav. Therefore, you've got. Pradeep Gupta saying no major change. Now you are the one who is saying on this show major change. Can you tell us, and we've had a fourth round today, where the major changes you are seeing? Which are those states where you believe this election is turning? Because you are clearly saying this election has turned. Uh, Rajdeep, let me begin by expressing my agreement with both the p panelists in this very civilized conversation, which is so rare on television. Uh, number one, I actually completely agree with Dr. Bhalla. It's the economy stupid. 
Mm -hmm. uh, both of us agree with this. I think the only difference that both of us have is uh, which direction the economy has gone and who exactly is stupid. We have a minor difference on that. Because what I heard, Rajdeep, when I traveled, and I, you, know, you can tell me because you've probably traveled a little more than I have. When I hear from people talk about you know, what's motivating their elections, the only thing related to economy that goes in Mr. Modi's favor is Russian. People give him credit for giving cheap Russian, free Russian supply across in a universal manner. But if you press a Modi voter and say, why are you voting for Mr. Modi? They actually don't mention anything to do with economy to begin with. All of them said, Desh ki ijat dunia mein bad gai hai. Bharat ka danka baj raha hai. That's one thing I hear. Mm -hmm. Second thing I hear is 370, 370, Kashmir. Third thing I hear is Ram Mandir. Now, to my mind, these three are not economy related issues. However, when people talk, talk of economy, and that's where I agree with uh, Dr. Bhalla, to my mind, the decisive thing is what people feel about economy. And at least I hear them speaking about Mangai. I hear them speaking about Berojgari. I hear them speaking about what's happening to Kisan. I sp hear them speaking about what's happening in examinations, about uh, the real life issues. And on most of these are weighing against the BJP. Uh, I don't know if most of the voters that I met knew much about GDP. Probably they didn't. Uh, but they knew something about what's happening to their own family, their own economy, and what's happened. And they were quite angry. Mm -hmm. uh, on what Mr. Pradeep Gupta said, the reason I agree with him is that I'm also not saying ulat fair in the sense that uh, this is not a 1977 election, you know. Uh, this is not an election where, at least at this stage, I don't think BJP is going below 200. I don't think BJP is taking that kind of a thrashing. No. But to my mind, it is a significant change. And the significant change is this, that BJP, there is a significant swing against the BJP from Gujarat to Bihar, this entire belt that the BJP had swept, and add to it Karnataka as well. That may or may not result in seat change in different places. In Gujarat, the margin is so big uh, that the swing may not affect very many seats. But in Rajasthan, especially in eastern Rajasthan, it will affect seats. In Haryana, it will affect seats. And in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar as well, it is affecting significant number of seats. Uh, which is to say, so my estimate that you referred to very kindly was that BJP could go down by 70 seats compared to, 2000, uh, uh, compared to 2019. And I suspect, Rajdeep, you and I remember 2004. I mean, I'm saying, I'm taking the liberty of saying that because we were together at that time in a channel working and uh, sharing notes every evening. And remember what happened in 2004? Every pollster got the figures, and they were, and, and pollsters do not get a precise number, they get a range. And every pollster was giving margin of error, adjusting margin of error in BJP's favor in every single state. Therefore, every pollster had an inflated figure for the BJP, even after they had polls. In reality, something very different happened. I would not be surprised if that kind of a thing happens. However, I do not expect, uh, you know, India with a 300 plus seats. No, that kind of a fair I also don't expect.